Good morning, Kev at Leeds Harmonica here. Um, I'm going to do a quick video here on how to use jam tracks to practice, how to use them effectively. Um, I'm forever telling people to practice jam tracks, but I realise that there isn't a fantastic amount of information out there on exactly what you can do with these things. Okay, Jam tracks are a fantastic resource for practicing. Uh, it took me quite a long time in my journey to realize just how effective they were and how to use them properly. Okay, so I'm going to go through some um, strategies you can use for playing with jam tracks here. And then towards the end, I'll, um, I'll offer some uh, cautions as well and some things to watch out for. Um, okay, here we go. Okay, so the simplest and most obvious thing that you can do um, is just to practice licks, right? If you've got a lick that you're learning um, or a lick that you want to play, just stick the jam track on and play the lick a bunch of times, right? Um, I'm going to play something here. The lick itself isn't important. Obviously, this applies for any licks. Um, I've got a B-flat harmonica in my hand, a jam track in F here from Ultimate Jam Tracks, and um, this is how I would practice a lick both so that you uh, learn the lick and you can play it, but also so that you can repeat and repeat so it gets into your long-term memory, right? So, here's a jam track. I'll just uh, play a lick. I could just keep playing that. Um, I just improvised that, obviously, but um, works fine. If you, you can, if you can let that jam track run and play that lick for the entirety of the jam track and make it fit in musically, then um, you're doing a good thing. You're learning that lick. And you're practicing the lick at the same time, and the lick's going to be there for you in your long-term memory when you're jamming in the future. All right, next. Okay, the next thing is timing. Um, it's all very well learning a lick without playing along to either a metronome or a jam track. And the cool thing about a jam track, if it's a half decent one, it will be in regular time, okay? Uh, just like a metronome will. Um, so if you're trying to come up with a lick, I can play that. Well, <laughs> I say I can play it, apparently I can't. Um, you can play that to your heart's content, but if you're not playing along to a steady beat, then you don't know if you're really playing it, because you don't know if you're playing it in time, unless you've got a highly developed sense of sort of internal time. So um, I'm going to stick that jam track back on. You might find, if you've been learning a lick and then you come to play it, you're suddenly up. Or whatever, you know, it, it could be all over. I got it right the first time. <laughs> but yeah. Um, you need to know that you can that you're filling it in, and you also need to know whereabouts you want to start playing that in time. Does it come on the one? Does it come on the two? Does it come on the end of the two? Alright, timing is is vital. Okay, the next one I've got written down is stamina, and this is important. If you can jam along to a jam track, and you can play consistently for the entirety of the track, you're doing a very good thing, right? You are uh, training your, your sort of long-term strength, your ability to play for a long time over the track. Now, you can do that either by repeating licks like we just talked about, or um, you can have a whole series of licks that you want to keep fitting in. But the important thing is that you're playing a chorus after chorus after chorus. Now, ordinarily, if you were playing in a band, you wouldn't get that many choruses unless you were in charge of telling everyone what to do. Or if you're just playing a, um, an instrumental by yourself. Um, so, yeah, stamina. Um, there are some jam tracks on YouTube that are for 
uh, guitar primarily, but I've seen some that last 20, 30 minutes. So um, not that you need to play for that long. But uh, yeah, just the idea that you can learn to play for a long period of time. That's just stamina training, right? I'm not going to play forever on this track. Um, but yeah, stamina. Okay, I've already hinted at this um, on the way up here, but um, repetition. Repetition is your tool when you're looking. It's your tool to use when you're learning to ingrain certain licks, certain movements, certain breathing patterns, whole choruses, um, specific licks that you want to fit over a specific part of the chorus like we are just looking at. Um, repetition in practice is the way that you learn. It's how you build up your muscle memory. Um, it's how you get stuff to seep into your long-term memory so that you don't even need to think about it. You can just start playing a hole and a little lick's gonna pop out, right? Um, that's the core of improvising, okay? When we're improvising, we're not usually playing something absolutely brand new. We're normally playing something that we've played before and it just it just flops out. You might change it a bit. It might start the same and you think, oh, well, I'm gonna change it as we go along, okay? but. Repetition, playing along with a jam track. Um, you can't learn without repeating. And it sounds laborious, um, but it needn't be. It, it can be, I find it quite fulfilling, really. You can start a sort of 10-minute practice session saying, I'm going to get this little lick that I'm having trouble with or this certain technique that I want to do. And if you just sit and put that jam track on, and you repeat and repeat and repeat. And it doesn't have to be just that. You can fit other things in, you know. But keep coming back to that one idea that you are trying to get on top of, to get control of. Um, jam tracks, fantastic tool for that, right? Because um, they just keep going and going. Um, and you've got to go along with them. Okay, repetition. Okay, so the next thing on my list is uh, same lick, different grooves. Oh, this is interesting. This is where you take one lick that you're used to playing over a certain groove and you try playing it over a different kind of groove and you find out how that goes. You may find you need to change the lick slightly. It might not fit right. You may need to fudge the timing a little bit. But this is really useful because in a live situation, you don't really know exactly what the band's going to throw at you, right? So getting used to playing licks over different groove, grooves is really useful because it prepares you for the eventuality when things aren't going exactly the way you expect them to, which is super useful. So um, I'm going to start on the jam track I've been uh, using so far. I'm going to play a lick. I'm going to improvise something and try and remember it. Then I'll try and stick it over a couple of other different grooves. Now, I don't know how this is going to go, so this will demonstrate you know, the, uh, the process here. But uh, if I stick this track on and come up with a lick. So that is what's called, well, it's, the track's called a marching shuffle. Um, I'm going to have to change harmonicas here because I'm about to change keys. This is a much slower track. Let's see how this goes. Actually, that worked out really well. Um, let's try another one. I'm going to change keys again. This one's in G, so... Now, this one's quite different. This is a two-fill. That was horrible. Am I even in the right key? Yeah, okay. Let me try that again. So this is completely different, right? So, 
This is what's going to happen when you start trying to play the same lick. Let's see if I can fit it in. There it is. So there you go, you see, um, that's how that works. It's, uh, it's really useful practice. Um, okay, the next one, again, is related to learning licks. This is building up speed. And again, you need something, a bit of software like the amazing slowdown or, or transcribe or whatever you're using. Something that will allow you to slow down the uh, tempo of the track without changing the key. So this is especially useful for speed licks. Okay. I'm going to go back to that uh, two feel we had just before because that was nice and fast, but I've slowed it down to around 70% of the original speed. So I'm going to try and put a lick over this nice and slow. to um, get comfortable playing it at that speed and you can play it at that speed for a long time right there's a myth about um, well, it's not really a myth but speed playing can be achieved by practicing slowly when you practice slowly what you're doing is you're giving your I'm gonna use the term muscle memory again I know it's not 100% accurate but serves the purpose right you're teaching your body to make these tiny little movements and it's such a small instrument um, tiny little movements and uh, changes of breath and everything so when you play slowly you give your body a chance to adapt to these new movements that you're requiring of it okay and you will find that if you practice slowly and then slowly start to increase the speed if you've done enough practice slowly the speed isn't quite the issue you you might expect it to be because you've put in the groundwork all right you've got a serious um, bedrock of uh, practice and repetition there already oh, I can't remember where this quote comes from I think it was from a jazz drummer or uh, a jazz drummer teacher who would tell his students if you can't play it you're trying to play it too fast okay the point being that if you slow it down to a glacial pace, you'll be able to do it. And if it that's what it takes to get those movements ingrained, whether it's drumming or playing the harmonica, then that's what it takes, right? You can't run before you can walk, essentially. Right, I've blathered on enough. I'm going to speed that up a little bit. Uh, take it to 86% slow. Let's see if I can play it. Now, now, full speed. I'm going to take that back to the start. Okay. This is the original speed of the track. Oh, it snuck in before I was even ready. See, this is what happens. That's the process. All right, start slow, get faster. Next thing as we rattle through these, uh, songwriting, um, by which I mean sort of instrumental writing. If you want to come up with a, an original harmonica instrumental, um, you are really going to struggle to do that unless you're using a jam track, unless it's specifically um, a solo harmonica piece that's designed. You're going to keep the rhythm, right? You're not relying on a band to do that. But yeah, I mean, you could come up, you could be writing um, a song and you want to know how it flows, you want to know how one chorus goes into the next, you want to know what kind of beat you're writing licks to, what kind of groove. Um, if you were writing an instrumental, I think really you need a jam track to 
write it against, or at least you don't need one, but uh, you're going to greatly enhance your uh, chances of success, I think. Accompaniment. Now, there aren't a huge amount of jam tracks out there that have vocals on them. Um, there are some. Barrett's got some good ones um, and what have you. I'm going to link them all down below, by the way. If you want to learn to effectively accompany a singer, you need to have a singer to work with, right? Whether it's a real live one or one on a jam track that you can keep rewinding. It's one of the big things about accompaniment is that you don't want to stamp on the vocals, right? You want to enhance or sit in and in, weave in and out of the vocals. Um, but accompaniment is a big one because really if you're not soloing, which you're not doing 80% of the time, or more than that probably, then what are you doing on the bandstand? You're accompanying, you're being part of the band. So learning to follow the chord changes, learning to play in the cracks and the vocals, all that stuff, um, you really need a good jam track with, uh, with vocals for that. Um, or the, the other option, of course, is to just find songs that don't have any harmonica on them already. They're a great way of, of doing that if you can find the right key and whatnot. But yeah, accompaniment. And lastly, <laughs> you'll be pleased to hear. Um, the last thing I've written down is just for fun. If you just want to, the, the harmonica is an instrument that really wants to be played with other instruments, okay? And if you don't have um, other musicians at, you, at your beck and call all the time will sit and play with you, then what are you going to do if you're by yourself and you just want to jam, right? You just want to have fun, you want to play licks that you know, you've had a hard day at work, you want to have a, a few drinks and just let your hair down. What? <laughs> I mean... I do that all the time with jam tracks. If I just want to blow up, blow off some steam, I'll put the amp on, put a jam track on really loud and uh, just have a way at it for, you know, 10 minutes, half an hour, whatever. It's important, I think, um, when, you know, because I'm always sort of trying to help people learn how to play, you've got to keep, it's got to be fun, right? There's no harm whatsoever in playing things you already know how to play and just having fun with it. That's really important. And jam tracks are great for that. Okay, so coming on to some of the um, cautions now, things to watch out for. Um, it really helps to have good quality jam tracks. If you haven't got a good quality jam track, really, you may as well be playing along to a metronome. Some of them out there are really just full of midi beeps and they haven't got real instruments on and they just sound a bit grim and horrible um not so much fun to play with so it's it's really much more inspiring and much more useful if you've got uh really good decent well recorded jam tracks to play to um i will link some down below um obviously bluesharmonica.com uh, Ultimate Jam Tracks, uh, Jimmy Lee's Groove Tracks, Dennis Grueling's got great jam tracks. They're, they're, Dennis Grueling's are really interesting because they're acoustic and there aren't many acoustic jam tracks out there and he's got them in all different grooves and different keys and whatnot. Um, and there are jam tracks, good jam tracks on YouTube. Um, you may spend a while looking for them, but they are out there. Okay, so get good jam tracks. That's the first one. This one is really important. Um, jam tracks are not, repeat, not a substitute for playing with other musicians in real life. Um, their preparation for it, their incredibly useful preparation. Um, in fact, if you haven't practiced with jam tracks, your chances of success when you're with other musicians, if you're not used to it, is, is pretty low, I'd say, um, off the bat. Um, but you can't replace the well it's the feeling of playing with other musicians and it's also in a sense the danger because they may not stay as rigidly in time as they need to and you've got to adapt for that they may throw weird things up that you're not expecting and you need to learn to adapt to that as well um and you really need to learn to listen to the band so really playing with the Playing with live musicians is really a whole nother skill set. Um, you cannot um, substitute playing with other musicians with playing with jam tracks. Um, it just doesn't work. But it's great preparation for playing with other musicians. Um, okay, 
Lastly and not leastly, thank you for sticking with us, if you're still here, by the way. Um, don't get stuck playing to the same jam track all the time. This is something I'm guilty of. I've got certain jam tracks that I put on all the time, and I need to just force myself to get out of that habit because you need to play to different grooves. Even if it's the same groove, listening to a different track that's been recorded with different musicians or whatnot will take you in different directions with your own improvising and your own ideas. So have fun. Play to lots of different jam tracks. And that's the key thing, isn't it? Have fun. Um, so thank you very much for listening to all this. I hope it's been useful and it's given you some uh, decent ideas. It's by no means a comprehensive list. I'm sure um, other people will have their own suggestions. Feel free to comment down below or email me at uh, leadsharmonica.uk. And uh, yeah, have fun jamming with jam tracks. And uh, I'll see you soon.